The market, as I say, 50-50 on 50 for March. Which side of the fence would you fall on? I think there's a very strong argument for a 50 basis point move at the March meeting. If they move just a quarter of a point, it would beg this question. They're clearly late. They've delayed last year starting off on the tightening process. They've got a long way to go. That's very clear. It, it would raise the question of why. And uh, moreover, it would it would cement this perception of them is somewhat addicted to gradualism. I think gradualism is what bit them uh, last year and uh, is what led to them delaying so long. So, yeah, I, I, 50 basis points is a strong argument in my view. Well, Jeff, uh, I think there's a thought here that the longer <coughs> it takes to actually hold on to inflation or rein it in, the more hikes are going to be required. How long will it take for the Fed to get a handle on this problem? It's hard to quantify, but uh, very substantial rate increases are clearly in store. Um, the Fed has to raise interest rates uh, in order to restrain the growth of demand. They have to significantly restrain demand. Uh, and if they don't do that, the inflation will continue to, to roar. Um, that's the mechanics of how things uh, work, of how monetary restraint uh, functions. Uh, and so they've got, they've got to get ahead of things. Um, so I think they've got to send the signal that substantial rate increases are coming. I think you saw Chairman Powell try to do that at the January yeah. press conference, and I think they'll continue to do that. Do, do you think the message has not been strong enough? The, the market seems really comfortable with this idea that inflation comes back down, that we're going to see a peak and then we're going we're to fall back relatively quickly uh, and get back down to, I don't know, circa 2% in the not-too-distant future. Are you saying you don't think that's going to happen, given current market pricing? Do you think that we're going to see, need to see even greater um, monetary policy tightening to deliver that outcome? I think financial markets have a history of underestimating the persistence of inflation. We saw that in the last episode of an inflation surge in the late 60s and throughout the 70s when inflation surged. Um, so I discount that. I think what really matters for inflation uh, isn't what financial markets think is going to happen, but more what people on the ground see, what businesses see. Are they able to pass on cost increases? Are they able to pass on higher payroll costs, higher input costs? Um, and if they see demand showing up, and their costs are going up, they're going to act and, and pass that on, whether financial markets expect it or not. Jeff, I think there's a big fear in the markets right now, and arguably uh, among economists and strategists as well, that somewhere along the line, the Fed is going to make a policy mistake. But let's say, just for, for uh, to be devil's advocate here, that they don't, that they get this one right, they're able to successfully uh, kind of pull us out of uh, essentially these emergency measures uh, that the pandemic had brought on. Well, historically, recessions happen every four or five years. So does this set the precedent for future recessions and how the Fed handles it? I hope that they learn a lesson from this, that, um, that in essence, they made a big mistake last year by not by essentially learning the wrong lesson from the last ex, uh, expansion. I think they're going to be a little more hesitant um, to uh, pull out all the guns and um, blaze away with asset purchases and keeping rates low and tamping down the yield curve. Um, next time, I think they're going to be a little more cautious about the, the, the possibility of a surge in inflation coming out of a a dip. Um, and, uh, you know, if they get away without causing a recession this time, um, yep. I think they'll be a little chastened. Jeff, what impact do you think, given the nature of the inflation that we're seeing at the moment, will rate hikes have? And what impact do you think rolling off the balance sheet will have? I'm just wondering what you think about the, the cause of the inflation we're, we're, we're looking at at the moment is and what the best levers to pull to deal with it are? I, I think the, the balance sheet is um, just a marginal uh, impact. I think it's more uh, valuable as a symbolic a tool for communicating their stance and approach to policy. I'd like to see them set a course for relatively soon and rapidly rolling off the balance sheet, and in particular, rolling off the MBS uh, holdings uh, as rapidly as it can, perhaps even shifting them into treasuries, because there's no, um, there's no godly reason why the housing market needs more stimulus at this point. Um, so I think rate 
hikes are the 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 main attraction here um, and as i said they act by restraining demand so they're going to uh, throttle action in the housing market uh, sales will decline um, you'll see housing construction uh, fall off um, and then more broadly they'll dampen investment spending perhaps um, uh, but dampen consumer spending more broadly and thought of it that way you can see why very substantial hikes are going to be needed in order to have a significant bite on demand growth. Well, so what about where does the uh, the fiscal policy fall into here? Because there are several things that perhaps the Biden administration can do. The Build Back Better plan, uh, perhaps releasing uh, more crude from their SPR reserves. Where does uh, the Biden administration fall into their partnership, essentially, with the Fed? Hopefully they're cooperating, but I think um, unless uh, you know, there's a substantial reduction in, in deficits going forward, uh, a substantial pullback in spending uh, or increase in taxes. The, the main attraction is going to be the Fed and their interest rate hikes. I, I think the show, the ball's in the Fed's court. There was a big financial stimulus, a big fiscal stimulus last year. Traditionally, that's meant tighter pol monetary policy commensurately to offset the potential inflationary effects. The Fed didn't give us that. They got to give it to us this year. Um, I think that's where the action's going to be. Jeff, do you think the fact that we're now seeing other central banks, and I'm thinking here about the ECB in particular, starting to move on a more hawkish tack makes the Fed's job a little bit easier? Is there a danger that actually rates have been held too low for too long in the United States as a result of the policy in Europe, the negative, the negative depot rate that the ECB uh, has lent on pretty hard. And as that starts to unwind, does that accelerate the move upwards in terms of yields and therefore allow policy to work a little bit more effectively? I, I think the ECB's policy shift in a more hawkish direction will make the Fed's life a little bit more easy. Um, the, the Fed, nonetheless, though, focuses on domestic uh, monetary conditions, and I think that the domestic inflation picture is what's going to be front and center in their mind. Sure, at the margins, the policy works also through um, sort of a trade uh, mechanism, but a trade channel. But I think, and because of that, I think the, the ECB and the general tightening of stances around the country, around the world are, are going to help the Fed, um, you know, uh, ease their concerns about um, uh, negative effects on the foreign account balance.